Hi, I'm Gordon from Camera Labs, and in this video, I'm going to bring you news of five new Canon products. First up, I'll tell you about a new portable photo printer, then a new mid-range DSLR, followed by two new full-frame RF mirrorless lenses, and finally, and arguably most exciting of all, some news about the EOS R5, Canon's upcoming highly anticipated flagship mirrorless camera. Now, before I go any further, I'm going to manage your expectations. This video does not have any hands-on reviews. At the time that I'm posting this, nobody has actually touched any of these products. However, things are going to move pretty quickly, especially in terms of the photo printer and the DSLR. So if you're watching this from March 2020 onwards, please do check out my channel because you may see actual hands-on or final reviews of some or even all of these products. Now, as somebody who's been reporting about cameras and imaging technology for over 25 years now, the various camera companies invite me to events and they really do vary in the amount of information and access that they offer. At one end of the scale, you could be handed a final production product that you can go out and actually shoot with and that allows me to provide you with videos, sample images and full tests. Essentially, it allows me to do a full review of the product. At the other end of the scale, you have briefings where you're literally told news, the information that is true so far and that they're willing to talk about. And this video is very much in that latter category. I had a briefing with Canon about all of these products. I got to talk to them about them, but unfortunately the details were fairly scarce. Now, the interesting thing is, is that if you follow the rumor sites and videos, you may already believe that you know some of this information or in fact have more than this information, but the big and very important difference here is that what I'm gonna to bring to you are not rumors, they are facts from Canon themselves. So everything you hear about in this video is the truth. So let's get on with it. Okay, first up is the new portable photo printer, the Selfie Square QX10, which pun fully intended is squarely targeting Fujifilm's Instax Square format, and in particular, its SP3 portable printer. Now, the Selfie Square is a similar prospect to the SP3. It is a fully portable battery operated printer, which is USB chargeable, and it is designed only for use with Android and iOS phones or tablets. As far as I understand, you cannot connect it directly to a camera or a laptop. It is purely a wireless portable printer and it talks over Wi-Fi as you'd expect. Now the interesting part is that even though it is roughly half the size and weight of the Selfie CP1300, which is a die sublimation printer that outputs six by four inch postcard size prints, the QX10 thankfully sticks with dye sublimation. It does not use the zinc process on the Canon Zoe Mini products, which in my own tests produced fairly disappointing output. Instead, it sticks with dye sublimation, which is a far superior process and that produces lab quality prints. However, these are smaller than the six by four inch prints that you get from the CP1300. And they are very reminiscent of the prints that you would get from the Instax square format, except just a little bit bigger. So it's a square image. The uh, active image area is 68 by 68 millimeters or 2.7 by 2.7 inches. Compare that with the 2.4 by 2.4 inch size of Instax Square. Like Instax Square, there's a white border around the edges. So that's handy for scribbling on those uh, notes with your Sharpie pens. But in a nice little update that uh, Fujifilm doesn't yet offer, the backs are actually sticky backs, so you can stick these photos onto things, which is actually one of the features I most enjoyed about their uh, zinc products. Canon reckons that the prints have got a 100 year life, I'm not going to be able to test that, but they do seem to last longer than the uh, zinc prints that I've already had stuck on my wall and which have faded a bit already. There's a 43 second print time and you're looking at about £140 for the printer itself and the packs of 20 prints cost £15, so that's about... 75 pence per print. And like the Instax format, everything you need, including the ink and the development process is all embedded inside that, or it comes inside the cartridge. So you don't need to buy separate ink. Everything is inside that cartridge. So that 75 pence uh, running cost is how much it's gonna cost. You're not gonna end up with spare ink or spare paper. You can't use anyone else's paper. This is how it works. So really think about the Fujifilm Instax SP3 which is also roughly similar in price, similar functionality, but with slightly larger prints that cost roughly the same. 
Okay, the second new product is the Canon EOS 850D, which is a mid-range DSLR, and the joint successor to the EOS 77D and EOS 800D. This means that the 850D is positioned roughly between the 250D, or Rebel SL3, and the more recent 90D. And personally speaking, I'm really pleased that Canon has begun to consolidate this end of their range because frankly, previously, there were far too many models available. So the 850D is providing a nice step up from the 250 without going quite as far as the 90D. It has the same 24 megapixel APS-C sensor as the 250D, which means it inherits 1080p with dual pixel autofocus. Unfortunately, it also means that it inherits the same 4K video capabilities as that model, which means it's cropped and it doesn't support dual pixel autofocus. It's only contrast-based autofocus. So like the 250D, best not to think of it as a very flexible 4K camera, but it's great for 1080 and you still get a fully articulated touchscreen and a microphone input. So you might be thinking, why wouldn't I go for the 250D? Well, the new model gives you faster continuous shooting at seven frames per second. You get a much more sophisticated 45 point all cross type viewfinder autofocus system. Compare that to the older 9.0 AF system. I mean, it's a big improvement. You also get eye detection, you get the metering sensor from the 90D and an AF on button. And looking through the specs and the pictures, it doesn't appear to suffer from some of the gotchas that Canon has had on some uh, recent models. So the hot shoe does appear to be fully functional. It does have that center sync pin, which means it will work easily with third party flashes. And you also do appear to have 1080 at 24p as well as the other frame rates. Of course, these are just based on the initial specs. Things can change. But again, if you're watching this from say March 2020 onwards, do check out my main channel because I may have already had a hands-on or even a full review of this camera. And you're looking at a price of about 820 pounds, including the EFS 18 to 55 millimeter kit zoom. Moving on, not one but two new RF lenses for their full frame EOS R mirrorless system. And first up, the RF 24 to 105 millimeter F4 to 7.1 IS STM. Now this is a light compact entry level zoom designed to be paired with their light entry level full frame mirrorless products, which right now is the EOS RP. And when you mount this lens on that camera, the combination is comfortably less than a kilogram, making it really nice and portable. It is a very small and light kit zoom. It weighs 395 grams, measures 89 by 77 millimeters and costs around 459 pounds. So that's pretty reasonable for the reach that it gives you. Now, obviously the focal ratio at the long end isn't particularly impressive, f7.1, nothing to get that excited about. But again, this is designed as a budget lens and it does have optical image stabilization and also an STM focusing motor, which is nice and quiet for video use. Now it'd be easy to move on at this point, but there was an additional feature that I found quite interesting about this lens. And that is that when you have it set to autofocus, of course, like all lenses, there is a closest focusing limit. But if you set it to manual focus, you can actually focus quite a bit closer. Now in doing so, the lens gradually becomes softer and softer in the corners, but the center remains sharp. So Canon has let you do this and has turned it spun it into quite a nice feature because it, it says it's now a center focus macro option. What that means is that the image is only sharp in the middle area, but it does allow you to get closer to the subject and get some pretty nice macro reproduction. And considering that in a lot of macro shots, the edges are kind of blurry anyway, does it matter so much that they're not sharp on this lens? So I think this is quite an, an interesting feature that they've allowed you to focus that bit closer in manual, should you want to, or retain the full expected quality in autofocus, but without being able to get quite so close. The second RF lens is a development announcement of the RF 100 to 500 millimeter F4.5 to 7.1 L USM, along with new 1.4 and two times extenders. Unfortunately, there's no other details at this point, no idea on availability or pricing. I asked the question whether the barrel extends as you zoom, they couldn't tell me, but my expectation is that it will. But of course, the big question is how the quality will compare to the existing EF 100 to 400 millimeter, which to me is actually one of my favorite lenses in the system. And Canon also teased that they would be releasing five additional RF lenses during 2020. So do keep an eye open for those updated roadmaps. 
And now for the product you've all been waiting for, the EOS R5. It's real, it's official, it's going to happen, but this is a development announcement, so the details are scarce. And what I'm gonna tell you is actually less than you have probably already heard about in rumors, but remember that what I'm telling you is fact direct from Canon. This is not speculation, this is not rumor. These are confirmed details. Judging from the two official photos that Canon's released, the EOS R5 looks pretty similar to the original EOS R from the front, but it's a bit taller with a more rounded head and two interesting details on either side of the mount near the bottom. That looks like some sort of flap to me on the bottom right. A glimpse at that top surface shows similar exposure controls to the original EOS R along with its circular power switch and a similarly sized top screen. Of course, without seeing a picture of it from the back, we can only guess whether the M function bar remains. I wouldn't be too bothered if it's removed, but I will be very annoyed if it doesn't have a fully articulated touchscreen. Surely Canon is not gonna remove that, will it? Beyond the photos, Canon teased us with some information about the EOS R5. First is advanced 8K movie performance. Those are the company's exact words. No mention of frame rate, no mention of crop, no mention of running time. I'm not gonna speculate, you can guess, tell me what you think in the comments, but it will film 8K. It will also shoot at 12 frames per second mechanical and 20 frames per second electronic. However, there is no mention to the sensor resolution. Fingers crossed it's gonna be a nice high resolution sensor. Canon has thankfully confirmed the presence of IBIS inbuilt image stabilization by shifting the sensor at last, at last. And this is truly gonna transform the EOS R system. I mean, we've all wanted it on all Canon cameras for so long, it feels almost unbelievable that it's gonna happen. And it would appear to not involve any, any kind of half-hearted measures either because it is also confirmed to work alongside any optical stabilization in the lens. I hope that also applies to adapted EF lenses, but this is gonna make the EOS R system so much more attractive than it was before. Also, as you would expect, dual memory card slots. No word as to what the format is, but I'm guessing it's gonna be SD. I said I wasn't gonna speculate, but I can't resist. The EOS R5 also becomes the first Canon camera to officially support its upcoming image.canon online service. This is a replacement for the existing image gateway service. And Canon is using it as a kind of halfway house for all of your data from the camera. The idea is that compatible cameras so far, only the EOS R5 has been confirmed, will over Wi-Fi be able to transfer all of their data. So that's photos in JPEG and in RAW, also videos. They talk about 4K, they haven't mentioned 8K, but I would assume that it would be supported or hope that it would. And it would sit in the image.canon service for up to 30 days, during which time you can configure it to then uh, send out onwards to other cloud-based storage or archive services, you know, like say Google Drive. So it's not designed as a long-term storage. It does have a smaller amount of long-term storage, if you like, but in terms of like the entire contents of your card, it's a kind of temporary backup while you're out and about that can then be redistributed to various other services or automatically downloaded onto one of your computers at home or in the office. But beyond that, that's all that Canon was willing to tell us about the EOS R5 in terms of the timing in mid-February 2020. As always, if you're watching this video later on in the year or in the future, please do check out my channel because there could well be hands-on reviews or even full reviews of any of the products that I've talked about. Um, but beyond that, for, for this video, no expected uh, date or price or even sensor resolution on the R5. So feel free to speculate and have a chat in the comments. I'm not gonna do that here. There's uh, plenty of other people that do that. So the only thing left for me to do is make a, I suppose, a really uh, unapologetic uh, bit of uh, product placement. Mm. That really does make the uh, beverage of your choice taste that much better. I believe there may be some uh, links to order this sort of merchandise in the comments, but who knows, you'd have to check. And behind me, two different versions of my in-camera photography book, which of course is fabulous. You don't need me to tell you that. Hang on, I am telling you that. This is the original version uh, on this uh, shoulder here. 
And here is the reprint. This is version 2.0, which you may have seen if you uh, uh, order this book on Amazon. It will say, hey, you know, there's a new version available. That's this version. The only thing that's different is the cover. The contents are the same. So if you see version 1.0 available at a more affordable price, I'd go for that. Why not? Save yourself a bit of cash, buy yourself a coffee, and of course, drink it out of an official Camera Labs mug. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you found this useful and that there was some good information here, all based on facts, reality. This is what I bring to you. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.